Um, can I ask everybody to stand up, please? <laughs> okay. And say Ramadan Kareem or Ramadan Mubarak to the person near you. And loudly. Ramadan Mubarak, everybody. At least we get to stretch a little. Please sit down. Ah, Imam. I know did <laughs> Thank you, sir. In only Amdulillah, Namaduhu, and Asta Inu, and Asta Kiruhu. When I would be like me, Shiri and Fusina, Wami Sayati and Madina. My idea, La Fala Mudilala, Wama Yudlil, Fala Diala. What shall do a la ila ila la daula shurikala? Indeed, all praise is due to Almighty Allah, and as such, we should praise Him. We should seek His help and His forgiveness and protection from the evil which is within us and the evil which results from our deeds. Because whomsoever Allah allows to go astray, none can guide. And whomever He allows, um, whoever He guides, None can allow to go astray. So I bear witness that there is no other God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad, son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the messenger of Allah and the seal of all prophets. Once again, I greet all of you by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. First of all, I would like to say a very big thank you to Brother Lukman Adikombi. He has been so consistent with this lecture series, AIC lecture series, all the way from Alimosho to the indoor sports hall of the National Stadium to the National Theatre and here. 14 years on, he's been doing this. Jazakullah Khairan. May Allah reward you. And he has done it, you know, with so much passion and commitment. This is a huge legacy. May Allah continue to bless you. Um, today, I'm going to talk about coping strategies for strong Muslim home. In today's rapidly changing world, the challenges faced by Muslim families are quite enormous. From the pressures of modern living and globalization, to maintaining a strong Islamic identity while Islam is constantly being demarketed every turn you take, it can sometimes feel overwhelming. However, as Muslims, we are blessed with guidance from the Quran and the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet wasalam, to navigate through these trials still building resilient homes. This afternoon, we will explore some coping strategies rooted in Islamic teachings to strengthen our families and foster a sense of, of unity and tra tranquility within our homes. I have a list of seven. And these are attributes that can help us to navigate the troubled waters and still stand strong. Number one is tawakul. Two is patience. Three is gratitude and contentment. Four is to seek knowledge. Five is communication. Six is how to build strong and supportive relationships. And seven is adapting to changes. The foundation of coping with any challenge lies in our reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is tawakul which literally means reliance on Allah, trust in Allah. As mentioned in the last part of um, Quran chapter 3, Surah Al Imran 159, it says, and rely on Allah, and sufficient is Allah, 
as disposer of affairs. So you see, trusting in Allah and his wisdom and decree enables us to cope with difficult times. Tawafu, tawakul is always, you know, often discussed as a theoretical or academic concept. But it's actually really is an inner thing. It's a private thing. And the first practical step to actualize tawakul is to recognize that Allah is all powerful. So who is Allah? Allah is beyond description. If you have a mango tree, I have a huge mango tree in my house, and I look at all the leaves, it's imp it is impossible for me to count all the leaves on that single tree. But there's so many trees all over the world, and every single leaf in all those trees, Allah knows. Allah Akbar. So Allah is huge. So you have to know him to be able to worship him. If you don't know him, it will be difficult. So we have to, in our quiet moments, sit down and think about it. Look at creation. You have a man or a woman coming together, just a tiny sperm or egg that you can't even see. Under the microscope, it's so tiny. And then that little thing becomes a human being with fingers, with bones, with teeth, with eyes, with everything. Subhanallah. That is how huge Allah is. And so if you know that this is the person that created you, you want to have total belief in him. Total reliance. Like whatever he does, he does for the best. And he knows everything. So, Allah is in control of everything. He knows everything. He sees everything. The second step is to affirm Tawheed in your heart. Tawheed is that there is no absolute anything or anyone comparable to Allah. He's all in one. And so if you know that, if you have any problem or any issue, this is who you go to. You don't go to any... Um, you go to imams who will guide you, but you're not going to go to imams who are going to say they're predicting or they're checking uh, sand for you because you know that they don't even know. So the person that you can talk to and take your problem to is Allah. Total reliance in Allah. So when you have um, your Hafam Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, it makes it a lot easier for you to have Tawakul. Then number three is to have to be at peace with Allah's will. When you, are, when you are at peace with Allah's will, whatever he does, you are comfortable. You know, I was coming here this morning and for some spooky reason, the driver just took a turn and took a, a what do they call it now? Uh, I think auto. Instead of going through um, you know, we're coming from Qatar, instead of going through Costain, so he went there and we were stuck in traffic. And I was so agitated. But after some time, I said, this is the will of God. If he wants me to get there early, maybe I will. And maybe that is an opportunity for me to even revise what I want to talk about. So I had a little bit of peace. So when you have that, when you get into that realm, it's easy for you to navigate through, through life. The fourth thing to help us with that our call is thinking good about everything and especially about Allah. These days it's a bit difficult because you listen to the news, you watch the TV, you take your phone and, and look at the social media. Everything is negative. And all these things have a way of impacting our psyche. When you, you, know, when you consume too much negativity, invariably, involuntarily, you start thinking, thinking negative. You think negative of the situation of the country. You think negative of people around you. And invariably, you start thinking negative of Allah. Why has he not done this for me? So we have to be conscious of what we consume. So that we can think positive about things around us. 
about people around us, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thinking good is very, very important. Number five is dispelling doubts from your mind. Shaitan is very, very powerful. You know, he questioned Allah. Allah said, I'm going to create a vast giant on earth so all the angels should bow down. But he questioned so he's very, very troublesome. And he's around. And Allah has, Allah has given him the will to be here to test us. But for the, those, those people who Allah will save, he will save them. Who believe in him and who hold on to him. So he will put doubts in your mind. Fear of hunger. Fear of sickness. Fear of joblessness. Fear of ill health. Fear of everything. But you have to be able to counter it. So, I would be like, you know, Shaitan Rajim should not be far from my mouth. Anytime you have any strange, um, doubtful thoughts, I would be like, you know, Shaitan Rajim. It's very simple. We say it, you know, without meaning it. But now we have to say it consciously and mean it so that we don't allow Shaitan to put doubts in our hearts. Number six is handling all our affairs to Allah submitting to him not just in mouth in our deed from our whole being submit everything to him if you have worked so hard and everything has gone so well alhamdulillah if you have worked so hard and it's not doing no going the way you want it alhamdulillah because you know that you have submitted everything to him and he will do the right thing then the seventh is to be pleased with your destiny and that is what is called Riga Belkoda, being pleased with destiny. So you accept everything. So if you have all of this, you know, you have to work all, you'll be able to practice leaving everything you have and putting all the things that you have on the table in front of Allah with your hands humbly raised up to him. And that is, and so when you get into that realm, that space, you should encourage your family to do the same. And when I say encourage your family, it doesn't mean that I'm the father, I'm the leader of this family, so that is what I have to teach my, my children. Yes, you do that. But it can be you as the son or the daughter that you teach your siblings and even your parents depending on who Allah gives this blessing to. We all strive. But it, so it's not my parents uh, or my father's duty to know Tawakul and then to teach us. Or my mother's um, uh, duty to know it and teach us. It could be you. That you teach your siblings and invariably even teach your parents in some cases. So we have to learn. Um, once, once we're in this space, we should be able to encourage our family so that we can have that strong Muslim home that we're all looking forward to. Number two on my list is patience. You have to be patient with everything. Trials are in inevitable. If you pray from morning till night, you do your five times daily prayer conscientiously, you fast, you do tahajud, you give charity, you are very good. You think about Allah, you are, you know, there's nothing shaking your faith, but you'll still be tested. Nobody is immune to test. The Prophet wasalam, was tested and he bore his trial with patience, perseverance. So Allah says in the Quran, chapter 2, Surah Baqarah, the last part of uh, between uh, Surah 156 and 157, for us to seek patience with, with perseverance in times of difficulty. So we have to cultivate the, um, the habits of being patient. You will remember the story of Professor, uh, Prophet uh, Ayub. We know how he was tested in all ramification and not for once did he say anything um, negative about Allah. And presently you have the people of Gaza. Sometimes, how would it be like not Shaitani regime? I just think, and these people are not even questioning God. And they're still so strong and so, um, so patient in the time of uh, trouble. That is the height of it. So no matter what we go through, we should be patient and hope 
in the goodness of Allah. Number three is gratitude and contentment. Sakina. We should be grateful to God for everything. The country is very, very, is going through some turbulent period, but nothing uh, bad goes for forever. It's going to be good. And as Muslims, we have to believe in that, that in normal history, history, after any hardship, this is. And the English people will say, at the end of the tunnel, at, at, at the end of the tunnel, there will be light. So we know that the Nigeria will still be good and our situation will still be better. And in the meantime, you have to be grateful to God. Gratitude for everything he has given us. You all came here today. You came from your home. So that means you have a house over your head. Some people don't even have that. You are here. You can see me because you have eyes to see. You can hear what I'm saying because you can hear those are things that you may consider little, but are not little. We cannot stay for a second without breathing. Or maybe if you want, if you, you, you know, you practice it if you're swimming under the water, but then just for 20 seconds and you're not breathing, you're not doing anything, you're not going to, um, it's going to, you know, you know, foretell doom. But we're breathing by ourselves. We don't have tubes. And so many people do have that. So we should be thankful to God. You came here. Even if you don't have your car to come here, you had money for transportation to come here, to come and listen to the words of Allah. So you are better than a lot of people. Even if you don't have that money and you took a ride with somebody, at least you know somebody who has a car. You are a champion. So in everything that we have, we should be thankful to Allah and be grateful to him. And when you are, you know, when you are grateful, you have contentment, you have sakina, you're able to, to navigate through life. Then number four is communication to have a very good, strong Muslim home. The Prophet wasalam, said, our speech must be gentle with wisdom. These are times that everybody is short-fused. You are very angry and then you flare up at the shortest, um, shortest provocation because things are very difficult. But this is a time to employ wisdom in approaching people, especially people in your family. The Yorubas have a saying, they say, Bele, Oniako, Olabu. So the way you communicate things to your family, to your wife, to your children, you must employ wisdom. You can't just be you can't just give it to them the way you are feeling. As a head of the family, you want to provide for your family. You want to do everything for them. But if you are not able to, you get frustrated. And then you take it up. You know, take it uh, out on them. This is not the time to do that. If you cannot say anything that is going to soothe the, 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 the tension or to calm it down, just go into your room or like the prophets always say, do ablution and then just say, start saying, uh, do your nafla. After some time, there will be ease and then you cannot communicate with your wife. So we have to employ good communication things in these times especially. In all times, but this time most importantly. Number five. We have knowledge. You remember the first word of uh, Revelation is Ikra, read, and that presupposes knowledge. We have to learn about the virtues of the prophets, all the prophets in the Quran, and so we can take lessons from all of them. There is absolutely nothing, no situation that we have or that we are in that some of the prophets in the past had not passed through. None. It's the patience. You learn from the, you learn them from Ayub. Is it betrayal? You learn them from the, they learn that from the Prophet. So, is it poverty? You know, there was a time the Prophet and the Sahaba, they were so hungry, so poor, they would tie stone around their stomach. So, there is nothing that we are going through that the prophets have not gone through before. So, you just have to learn. To be able to pick this. The Quran is very easy. It's in English. 
if you can read the Arabic so that you can have knowledge. The Quran is in Yoruba, is in Hausa, is in all languages. So if you're struggling to read the Arabic for Tilawa's sake, but for knowledge and you want to really read to understand, pick the Quran in the language of your in your language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran that we have given you, O Muhammad, the Quran in your language so that you can understand it. So it's not because um, Arabic is very is a wonderful language, but Allah gave it to the Prophet because that is his own language. So you have to also understand the Quran in your language so that you can get the full benefit of the Quran. Number six is to have supportive relationships. Build up on your goodwill with family, with friends, with neighbors. Surround yourself with positive and supportive relationships. This is important for emotional well-being. Foster strong ties with your extended family members, your neighbors, and members of the community, providing a network of support during challenging times. Because, you know, when people help you, it makes it a lot. They said a problem shared is a problem half solved. So you remind family members of the importance of standing by each other's side through thick <clears throat> and thin. Encourage spending quality time together, engaging in activities that strengthen the family unit, such as volunteering, attending Islamic events like we're doing now, doing now. You bring your family together and sharing meals. These are all very, very important. And, you know, if God has made it so easy now. Some of, the, some of us don't live in the same place. The children are in different cities or different parts of the world. And Allah has given us technology. You have your WhatsApp. Instead of just using WhatsApp for negative things, just to look for things on Instagram that will give you pressure, use it to FaceTime with your family. So on a regular basis, talk to them. And not just talk uh flippant things deep serious things communicate with them always bond with them and make sure that you are still together and the neighbors that you have also try to be supportive so that because you don't know who is going to help you if you lend a helping hand to mr a today mr b will do the same thing for you tomorrow they say that um allah never forgets good deeds so it doesn't mean Mr. A that you help will be the one to help you. Allah will send Mr. B or and Mr. C to help you as well. Number seven is adapting to change. The world is very, very dynamic. It is not static. It is ever-changing. Change is inevitable. Like uh, Brother Ani Yusuf said, from the pandemic, I think even before the pandemic, Uber came, disruptions. Uh, we have Airbnb. We have so many things going on. People who work in the bank are finding it very difficult because there's flutter wave. There's an OP. No, I, I thought I would be done quickly. There's flutter wave. There's OP and all of that. So there are changes around. So you have to be able to learn, unlearn, and relearn. It is very, very important. You can't just stay static. You have to move with the times. Um, so... Um, so like I said something is wrong okay maybe what she said is, uh, is what I, can you hear me at the back hello okay my voice is not very loud You remember the prophet during the uh, Treaty of Hudaybiyah? He was going to Mecca for Umrah. But the, the Meccans forbade him from coming at that period. Instead of saying he was going to be adamant and force himself to go to Mecca, he changed his course. And they went back to Medina and came back the following year. And it was a huge success. So he changed. So you have to be able to adapt to changes. Don't be afraid of change. Change is the most, uh, most constant thing that will happen in this life. 
So don't say, oh, I used to eat three square meal last year. Now we're doing two. It actually, it could actually be for your health. Don't say, I go to parties and I do ashwabi every year, um, like six, seven ashwabi. But things are difficult now. I can only do two. You can change. So, what I'm saying in essence is that adapt with the times so that life can be easy for you. Don't, st don't continue to ruminate over what is past or what you cannot achieve. Try to adapt with change. So, in conclusion, building a strong Muslim poem requires dedication, patience, a steadfast commitment to Islamic principles and values. And by implementing coping strategies rooted in tawakul, effective communication, patience, gratitude, knowledge seeking, supportive relationships, and adaptability, we can create an environment where our families can thrive spiritually, emotionally, and socially. May Allah bless our efforts and grant us success in this noble endeavor. May Allah bless our home with strength, peace, and prosperity. And may he bless our, uh, our nation. May he give our leaders the right direction to lead us. And may he accept all our prayers and all our acts of ibadah during this Ramadan. And count everything. Are coming here. All the steps we take to get here. May he keep it for us as acts of good deed. So I wish all of you Ramadan Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.